Hello everybody and welcome to your 31st chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. This will be the last tutorial in your web services part of this tutorial. So we will be talking about JAXRS and its advanced topics. In chapter 29, we talked about the basics of Java API for RESTful web services. An API designed to make the processing of creating RESTful web services easy and faster. This chapter describes advanced features of JAXRS. So getting right into it, let's take a look at the annotations for field and bean properties of resource classes. JAXRS has annotations that are used to extract specific parts from a uniform resource identifier or a request header. What this means is that basically, uh, let's take a look at this uh, Java code. We have a URI path template which are URIs that contain variables within them like first name, last name, and domain. This code right here takes the last name of an employee, so it takes the last name of an employee, um, when his or her email address is provided. And it sets that last name over here to this last name over here, and then use that last name to get the employee's last name. This at path parameter extracts the last name parameter, like I told you, from the URI path template over here. For example, if your HTTP request is get Java e tutorial programming at gmail.com. This programming part will be inserted into the last name part. Now let's take a look at an example which takes in any query sent through a URL after the question mark. If you have this example over here, you'll see that the queries that are sent is the maximum year and your minimum year. So uh, then you might wonder, what, then what is this? So what is this add default value? This add default value simply defines a default value, which means that if there's no query parameter that is sent through, this default value will be taking, uh, taken instead of the query parameters down here. All right, so extracting form data. The add form param, uh, param annotation takes in data from the HTML forms which you've seen in the previous tutorials. This accepts the name, address, and manager's name of an employee. Then here in this following code snippet, it extracts the manager's name from this HTML form. As you can see, the add uh, form param takes the manager name. Now it stores the message in a map, which uses code similar to the following. Now let's take a look at extracting the Java type of a request or response. The following code snippet shows how to obtain a map of query and path parameter names to values. Over here, you can see that the at context gets the Java, uh, Java types and the URI info uh, interface provides information about the request URI. Then that is then used to figure out the query parameters and the path parameters. The following code over here shows how to obtain a map of header and cookie parameter names to values. First, this HTTP headers interface provides information about the request headers and cookies. Now let's take a look at validating resource data with bean validation. JAXRS supports the ability to apply constraints on resource method parameters like checking a person's password uh, if it contains at least one number and ensuring the data is valid, like checking if the person has entered a number when calculating information instead of a string. Using constraint annotations in your resource methods will greatly enhance your user experience because, for example, in this example, this at email constraint over here uh, checks if the email has the correct format. If not, it will send an error back to the client and tell that, hey, you got to like, actually give me like a literal email instead of something else. Constraints can also be applied at the resource class level. This example over here has a constraint that was created that checks if the client has either entered a home phone number or a cell phone number. Um, like both can be given, but at least one of them has to be given using this add phone required. So to validate entity data, this entity class over here contains both user defined and standard constraints. Over here, this is our user defined, the one that we created. And this is our standard, which tells that this username cannot be null. This is standard in our Java EE. After the user entity class is created, we can then use it as a parameter in a resource method. The at valid annotation ensures that the entity class is validated at runtime. So basically all these validations over here, it's validated um, if this 
at valid um, annotation is set in front of this user, which activates all the validators. If any validations or constraints throw any errors, you will receive an HTTP 500 error. All right, getting right into it, sub resources and runtime resource resolution. You can use a resource class to process only part of the URI request. A root resource can then implement sub resources that can process the remainder of the URI path. What that means is if all your URIs are literally like this part plus something else, what you can do is you can keep this as a re resource, a root resource class and this as another resource class that your rest can then take from another place. This saves time and uh, like makes it much easier for you because you don't have to write out this entire guy right here. All you got to do is write out this hello one. So sub resource methods, a sub resource method handles the HTTP re request directly. You've seen sub resource methods before, but this sub resource method, this get employee, uh, last name gets the last name of an employee's last name. In this example, the, uh, last name would be Doe. Now there's sub resource locators in this code snippet, the get employee method over here is the sub resource locator that provides the employee object, which means that it checks for an employee with this specific ID. It finds the employee and then returns that employee. Now you can use that employee in the, your sub resource method, which returns this employee's last name. And then inside here, you can put the add path last name, because now that you got your employee, you can go ahead and get your employees the last name over here. So let's take a look at integrating JAXRS with EJB technology and CDI. JAXRS works with enterprise Java bean technologies or enterprise beans and context and dependency injection for Java EE or CDI. Uh, if you need a refresher, I got um, like videos on both those topics, enterprise beans and CDI. So go ahead and watch those. And uh, to show you the power of JAXRS and AJB and CDI pairs, let's take a look at a stateless session bean and singleton bean. In this example of here, you can see that this is a stateless bean and this is our singleton bean. And this would be a regular JAXRS resource class. As you can see, it just has your class employee, which has your path param, and, and then it gives out the employee details. Now this is a JAXRS resource class converted into a CDI bean. Here you can see that instead of having to, you know, like put in your ID and stuff, uh, you can use your at inject over here, and then you can inject your employee ID over here. And then you can use your last name and then print out the employee details. So let's take a look at into runtime uh, content negotiation. Over here, you can see that your produces um, annotation says that this get employee address XML, it gets it in this XML format. What that means is you have this, let's say you have get employee, right? And it accepts, let's say plain text, then it will give out this uh, address over here. But let's say if you wanted it in XML, it would then print out this way in XML. So now let's take a look at the final topic using JAXRS with JAXB. Java architecture for XML binding or, J uh, or JAXB is an XML to Java binding technology that provides the tools to enable you to convert your XML documents to and from Java objects. Now to use Java objects to model your data, you must use an XML schema definition, which is the file that orders your XML data to, for, uh, to form in a certain way. In short, it's the structure of your XML. If you do not have an XML schema definition for the data you want to expose, you can model your data as Java classes, add JAXB annotations, and then use JAXB to generate an XML schema for your data. For example, if the data you want to expose is a collection of products and each product has an ID, a name, a description, and a price, you can model it as a Java class as follows. Once the JAXB schema generator is run on top of this, you will get the following XML schema definition. Now that you have this mapping, you can then create pro uh, product objects in your application, return them, and then use them as parameters in your JAXRS resource methods. The following resource class provides a simple example. In fact, NetBeans actually runs the XML schema generator automatically. 
for when you build your program. So you don't need to worry about this process too much. It is often that you will already have an XML schema definition and you would like to use it instead of the XSD, which is XML schema definition file that is provided by NetBeans. Let's take the uh, XSD file here as an example. We can then run the schema compiler tool as follows. So we can use this uh, XML schema definition and then we can run uh, it because its name is product. And then this command generates the source code for Java classes that correspond to the types defined in the .xsd file. In this case, the schema tool creates a Java class as so. Okay, so we've been talking about XML right now, how J JAX-RS can automatically read and write XML using JAX-B, but it can also work with JSON data. JSON is a simple text-based format for data exchange derived from JavaScript. So in the prece preceding examples, the XML representation of a product would be as sh shown and the JSON equivalent would be this. If you want your data to be sent in JSON, change the inside of your at produces annotation to the uh, as so. So either you can, your application can be shown in XML or your application can be shown in JSON. Okay, so enough, enough of this. Let's get right into the example. Now that we're in our NetBeans, let's go ahead, right click and click open project. Let's navigate to our JAX-RS package over here. Go ahead and open that up. And you can click on customer and open project. So this application is a RESTful web service that uses JAX-B to perform, create, read, update, delete operations for a specific entity. So uh, there are a few things that I want to take a look at. Let's take a look at our source packages, go into our customer data and go into address.java. Over here, you will see that um, this, this uh, entity class models the data of the application and contains all your JAX-B annotations. Like for example, at uh, XML ele element, um, this is a big one too. Uh, uh, XML root element, which tells that the root element will be address. And that's basically it, just setters and getters. Next uh, entity class will be customer.java. And in here, once again, you have your uh, like X, uh, Java, uh, your JAXB annotations, your XML root element. It's here, in this case, it would be customer. And you have your XML elements, not much. Oh, uh, one thing that you want to see over here, this one has the annotation called at one to one. What this means is that this customer.java has a one to one connection to your address.java, which means that whenever you create an address and your customer, it's basically connected in a one to one system. Right. So next, let's take a look at our customer service.java. Over here, this class contains JAXRS resource methods that perform operations on customer instances represented as XML or JSON data using JAXB. Over here, you can see that our path is at customer and all it's doing is it's basically just taking care of the stuff in XML. Like for example, it produces XML and JSON data and it consumes XML and JSON data, which means that you can send stuff, uh, you can send stuff to this uh, application and it will consume XML and JSON data, or uh, and this uh, application sends XML and sends JSON data back to the client. It also has a create customer method, which creates a customer. Let's go to that, create customer, there we go. Uh, so this creates a customer resource based on the customer class and returns a URI for the new resource. And finally, uh, we got our customer bean. Let's go to our EJB, customer bean.java. And you will see that this is our session bean, the backing bean for the web client and uses the JAX RS client API to call the methods of customer service. All it's doing is it's creating, it's destroying, and it's creating our customer over here. And that's basically it, yeah. So let's go ahead, go into our Glassroot server, go ahead and start it. I've already started it. And let's go ahead and click build. All right, once it's built, let's go ahead and right click and click run.
Make sure that you select your Glassware server, go ahead and remember permanently, and let's get right into this. So once our customer is deploying, we will see, first of all, you will see that you got your first name, last name, email, and so on. Let's go ahead and create our email. So let's go into Viprov Programming. So I went right ahead and filled it out for you, and let's go ahead and create our customer. So now it's saying that our customer is about programming, address is this, email is that, and our phone number is this. Let's go ahead and create a new customer, and our customer is created. As you can see, you're put back into your index.xhtml. If we create customer again with nothing, you'll see that there is an empty blank list, and it will keep on doing that. You can keep on creating a new customer. And you can keep on like seeing this list over here, which is our customer, our address, email, and phone number. And that just about wraps it up for today's tutorial, everybody. In this tutorial, again, we talked about the advanced features of JAXRS. This wraps it up for today's, uh, basically today's tutorial and today's part in web services. In the next part, we'll be talking about enterprise beans and basically how they, uh, they're the backbone of Java EE and make everything tick in the background. But until then, I will see you in the next video.